Hey everybody, today I'm going to cover a few more hints and suggestions on how to uh, program in LabVIEW. I think these hints will help you be more efficient and uh, allow you to get started in learning LabVIEW and help you along your path. So uh, let me show you a few things. I'm going to start off with a blank VI and once again I'm going to uh, tile this to left and right. To tile it I can just say control T or tile left and right and I, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use a for loop and show you a little bit about for loops, how to use arrays, and then uh, how to use graphs. And so in my application today, let's start with a for loop. So I right clicked in the diagram. In this case, I'm gonna drop down a for loop. And a uh, for loop is a window, and anything inside of that window will execute on each iteration of the loop. And then I can program the number of times that I want the loop to run by right clicking on N and saying create constant, and I'm just gonna type in 100. And then what I'd like to do is I'm gonna set up a numeric uh, control on the front panel, and um, this is gonna be a control that we're gonna pass in a value, let's say 50, and then inside of the loop on each iteration, I'm gonna check the value of that numeric. So let's do this. I'll go ahead and put a case structure. And a case structure is very similar to an if statement in Python. And what we want to test on is if this numeric value is uh, greater or less than 50. Now, the question is, do we put it inside the loop or outside the loop? If we put it outside the loop, it'll pass in this value as a constant, like you set it outside of a loop in, in uh, Python. And, but if we put it inside the loop on each, each iteration of the loop, it will look at the constant value to see if, if uh, the comparison uh, is greater than that value. So let's start by putting it an outside of the loop to show you how to do this. And so I've right clicked on the diagram inside the loop and then I want to use a comparison. So I go to the comparison palette and I want to know if it is greater than some constant. So I'll pass in this value and notice that it goes right through the window the, the for loop window or the for loop itself, and then we want to compare that to is it uh, is is this value greater than 50? And so we're going to wire in the index, and as you can see, it's going to index up to 100. So anytime it's that that the, that index value is greater than the numeric, we're going to run the true state of this case structure. Now, if I right click on this case structure or not right click, but scroll through, I can see there's two cases. And I can actually add a case after and case before. I can have one through n cases, and I'll have to rename them one through n, but that's how you would set up something that had more than one case. What we're gonna do is gonna say, if this comparison is true, I want to run the true state, and if it's false, I want to run the false state. So what I'd like to do first is just go ahead and make this very simple and input a constant value, a numeric constant inside the numeric palette, and let's set that equal to 10. If it's less than false, if it's less than 50, and then I'm going to pass that out of that window and then pass that out of the for loop. Now notice, if I go to the true state, there's nothing in the window. So what? Let's say if it's more, if it's greater than 50, let's create a constant and say it is 100. And once again, we'll pass that out of the case structure and pass it to the edge of the loop. Now, uh, I'm gonna expand this a little bit so we have a little bit more room to work. And a little uh, hint here is that if you wanna toggle between the front panel and the diagram, you can just use Control E. Um, Control E does that. Let's see, where is that at? It's probably under View. Control E, where is it? There it is, show front panel. It's under window. So uh, the thing I want to point out here is, is that when you take a single value to the edge of the loop, there are some options here you, under tunneling mode. So I right clicked, right clicked on that tunnel is what it's called, and I can say I want to to set the output to the last value, or I want it to index. And if you index, it will create an array indexed for starting with uh, zero all the way up to the last value, the last index. 
and that array could then be processed. Concatenating is if you have created an array and you want to concatenate an array. So if you have a 10 element array and you pass that to the edge and you on each iteration you wanted to concatenate that array, those 10 elements and add another 10 elements, that's what concatenating is. We're going to use indexing to create an array. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like as a, an indicator on the front panel. And this is what an array looks like on the front panel. So um, let's go ahead and come back to the front panel and then I can show you that. And then uh, if I want to see the array, I could uh, size it and then say, give me element four, starting with element four, but we haven't run this yet. So let's leave this at element zero and uh, go ahead and run this one time. And so this is going to, loop is going to run a hundred times and then it's going to stop and then it's going to pass out an array of size 100. And then some of the values are going to be 10, the first 50, and then the last 50 are going to be 100. So let's run that. Okay, so is okay. Well, I've got these. Uh, I wanted to test this condition, so this is important. I wanted to contest. Wanted to test if i is greater than the numeric, so I need to have this order. And to get help in LabVIEW, you just do Control H. You can see a window. I'm comparing is x greater than y. So it's good for you you to see me how I'm troubleshooting this. So I'm gonna if i is greater than that, I wanted to run the true case. And if it's false, I wanted to run this case. So I actually ran that properly, but it was good to show some troubleshooting there. So if I run that, now I've got all of my values up to 50. And so by the way, it indexes at zero. So the index zero is here. So if I put index 49 here and return that, we can see that 49 is 10, 50 is 10, and then 51, index 51 starts at 100. And so when index, becomes above the numeric value, which is this value here, it then turns on the true state and is 100. So that is how the array works. Now, if we go to index 99, we can see that that is the last index at 100, okay? And it starts at zero. So it's zero, uh, it's zero indexed all the way up to 99. But then when you program in, you put in, I want, to, I want it to run 100 times. So that's a little bit of a, a thing to be aware of, okay? So another thing that we could do here, so that shows you how to build really an if statement using a case structure, how to create an array, but let's say that we wanted to graph this array. How would we do that? We go back to our front panel. I can select, I want to show a waveform graph, and there's other options here I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, but let's start with a waveform graph. So what would you expect if I passed this array here to the graph? Now notice this line is thicker, and this line, this is a single element, and this is an array of, of elements. So that uh, is how you program a um, graph to show, and we, we can see that it goes starts out at 10, and then it goes up to 100. And once again, let's just show show how this graph works. I can uh, click on on the uh, axis and just change the axis, axis interactively, and size that. And then if I wanted to actually show two plots, I could do that. So let's show how we would do two plots. So let's go ahead and take this value. And so we're going to plot out the, the 0 and 100. And if we wanted to plot, let's say, the index itself, I could drag the index to the edge. And what it's going to do is create an array. It's going to create an array from, from 0 to 99, right? And this time, let's go ahead and break this. So I click this. Oh, here's something to know. If you want to clean up your diagram and you have wires that are that are just sticking out like that, you can do control B, control bad wires is what that stands for. It removes all the wires. So that's kind of nice just to know that as a shortcut. So if I want to make a waveform graph, in this case, I want to, to actually, I want to take two channels of data. I want to show the, zero, the 10 and the 100 step function. And then also I want to show this going from zero to 99. And to do that, I go to arrays and then um, I select build array and then I can size that array and then this will be the first curve or plot that I want to put onto the graph and this will be the second curve and then I will plot that out on the graph. Now notice that the line now is even bigger so I went from a 1D array to now a 2D array that I'm going to plot on the, on the front panel. 
and we can see the red line is the 10 to 100, and then this is the 0 to 99 value for the index. So that, that's kind of interesting. Now, that's a waveform graph. I've got multiple curves going on to the graph. What if I wanted to control the index of the graph? And that's, that's really an XY graph. So let's go to the graph, select XY. So I can, on this type of graph, I can control the index value. In this case, we'll call it time. And then what I want to do is I want to use a, a function um, that's in the arrays. Um, sorry, it's not. It is in the uh, clusters and variants. It's called a bundle. And then for this value, the top value is the x. And so this is expandable. So you can have multiple xy curves with multiple uh, y plots and, and one x. So for example, I want the index to go from 0 to 99, so I selected that, and then I want the plot to go from 10 to 100 there, and then the output from this is a cluster, it's like a structure in other languages. It's, it's a data structure that will pass to the XY graph. So let's run that real quick and we'll show the values. Once again, we can see it goes from 10 up to 100, and uh, we, Change that. We've got auto scaling on, so it does that. If I want to turn auto scaling off, I can come up here, say Y scale, turn that off, and now I'll always have the uh, axis that I have up here. And let's just change that to zero. We run this plot, and this will have the same thing occur again. So that is how you would do an XY graph. Now, you may see me when I have a, a broken wire like this, I just drag it up to the top and it eliminates it. So that's a quick way. So if you just kind of find yourself like, what do I do with this thing? And you're out here doing this, just drag it to the top, click, and then it removes it. Uh, so that's another thing to be aware of. And then constants, if you want to put a comment, excuse me, a comment into your code, you can come up under numerics and then you can select, uh, actually it's under structures or is it under numerics? It is, what I'm looking for is actually, you can use strings. Oh, here's a way to get to it. You can get to, you can go to tools, uh, view tool palette, and you can tab between the different or select what you want. And this is basically a way to add a comment into the code itself. And so I can say this is a for loop. And then um, if I want to change and position something differently, I can do that. That's a case structure. And then the other kind of key hint here is if you want to make more space in your diagram, what you can do is do a control drag and then that I'm hitting the control button and I'm dragging and I can change the shape of my for loop just interactively. So a few more hints for you there showing the tool palette. You can go between different objects here. If I want to be able to, to change this, I can go to the comment tool. Uh, and then there's other tools there for you to work with this probe function, I can put a probe right here and I can, or right here on each iteration of the loop, I can see what the I value is. And so this is a way to troubleshoot. This is covered in the National Instruments Tutorials on how to use the probe, so I won't cover that as much. Um, so let's go ahead and run this one more time. We run it and then let's do something else. Let's go one step further and let's use some of the mathematical functions. So I can come down to mathematics and if I want to do um, some probability and statistics. I want to find the mean and standard deviation. We've done a lot of that this class. So I'm going to select uh, standard deviation here. And I think it includes also the mean as an output. So if I go to the wiring tool, let's go ahead and take the output that is the array that has the zeros and 10. Let's take that. And then let's output and right click on the output here and say create indicator and it automatically creates an indicator and then I can create another indicator for the standard deviation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to position these so we can see them a little bit better in the diagram. Okay, so if I go back to the front panel, let's close this and find my mean and standard deviation. They're over here. Let's move them here so that we can see them. You can see that they're controls because I can't uh, change the value. So this is a, this is a this up here, as you can tell, it has something where I could change the values. So I could change this to 55, or I can click through the controllers here to be able to change that. And then over here, I don't have that for an indicator. So 
Uh, here's an example of how you add some analysis, and we can see that the mean value of this 10 plus 100 uh, is 54, and then the standard deviation is 45. That, that makes sense at first pass to me. So once again, there's just some quick examples um, and some hints on how to use LabVIEW to build a for loop, how to build arrays, how to use it in a case structure, and also how to use it for to, to create an XY graph and a waveform graph. All right, until next time.